Hey, what's up? This is John Chacon with your kettlebell swing instructional video. Kettlebell swings have exploded all over the fitness industry and they're becoming more and more used. Uh, especially in these types of facilities, they're probably the most common tool. They're no longer an unconventional type tool. Uh, but you go into your corporate gyms, commercial gyms, they're less and less seen. Uh, however, that doesn't mean don't use them. Kettlebells are great, especially if you have minimal resources or minimal time or minimal space. If you're in an apartment and you can't go to a, a gym somewhere else in town, having one or two kettlebells around is going to be very helpful. And the swing is one of those fundamental movements with the kettlebell. The reason it's so important is because it involves that hip hinge motion that so many people talk about. It's a little bit different than a squat, okay? And it incorporates our glutes, our hamstrings, and our lower back, upper back, muscles that tend to get tired and weak if you've been sitting all day. And so the idea is taking our bodies out of the seated position and reinforcing that hip extended position and building up those powerful muscles in our body, like our glutes, which happen to be the largest muscle in our body. So this movement can be very helpful. However, there's a few things that can make this go very, very wrong very quickly, and it can cause pain over time if not done correctly, or um, if you start getting in a fatigue state and you're not paying attention to some of these things, it can start to cause some issues. Now, at its very, very core, the swing, as most basic, it's a horizontal movement. So you're gonna be projecting this kettlebell backwards and forwards, okay? It's not gonna go down, which is commonly seen. It's not gonna go up. We're just going forwards and backwards with this, which is really, what a lot of our hips are designed to do is this forward and backward motion, okay? Um, that said, you want to load this, this kettlebell up in such a way that you're going to go forward and backwards. So the first thing I do when I load this up, but I start out very similar to how you'll see me do with our snatch and also with our clean variation. I always start off behind the kettlebell so I can start with a loaded hip position, loading those hips up like a slingshot. I'm going to step back about a foot and a half behind this kettlebell. I'm going to center the kettlebell between my feet. My feet are shoulder width. My toes are straight ahead. My heels are down. Before I even touch that kettlebell, I'm going to spread the floor apart with my feet while I lower my hips, bend in my hips, maintain that nice flat torso. From here, I'm going to take both hands, reach out, grab the center of that handle, wrap the thumb and fingers around, tilt it back. From here, I'm going to bend that handle backwards. When I bend it backwards, I'm going to be externally rotating my shoulders, allowing my shoulders to get pressed in nice and tight to my rib cage. Again, from here, now I'm in a good position. Everything's loaded up. I'm going to take in my belly breath. I'm going to swing it behind my hips, letting it go backwards, and then explode forwards, stopping at about belly height. Every time I come up, I'm going to fully extend the hips. I'm going to keep my arms nice and straight, keep my upper arms pinned tight to my sides. When I'm done, I'm going to lower it under control in that hip hinge position. Now, some common mistakes you'll see with this movement. Number one, not allowing that kettlebell to go back. For some reason, people have, I don't know if they feel touchy with the arms hitting the inside of the leg or what but they tend to slow it down and make it stop either right below their hips or just slightly behind. They don't allow the kettlebell to physically go back so that they can throw it forward. The reason we want it to go back is based off of Newton's third law. For every action, there's an opposite, opposite and equal reaction. So the harder and faster we throw that kettlebell back, the harder and faster we're gonna be able to propel it forward. Again, with that slingshot mentality, we're loading up our glutes and our hamstrings. So what is commonly seen when people start out, they'll let it kind of partially come back. <laughs> then they'll try to stand up and use their lower back, their upper back, not so much their hips. They're trying to pull it up with their arms. Okay, so let that kettlebell go back. That leads us into our second no-go. Okay, these are things you want to look out for that you don't want to do. Using your arms to actually pull that kettlebell up. Very little of your arm, or like there shouldn't be too much arm strength going into moving this kettlebell. The arms are there more to guide the kettlebell and allow your hips to do the work. So, if the movement starts looking like this, something's off. 
You're either not using your hips enough or that weight is too heavy and you're trying to make up for it, okay? Third thing, there is no standard height that the kettlebell has to get to. I've worked with a number of people and they're like swinging that kettlebell up by their face and I ask them why. And they say, that's how you're supposed to do it. I said, who said? They have no idea who said that, okay? So I'm telling you, there's no standard height, but my recommendation, so you can get in as many swings as possible, quality swings, and so that there's no point where there's kind of air time with it, where it's not really doing anything, it's just kind of hanging out. Go about belly height, okay? About right here, out in front of your belly, is just enough, okay? That allows it to swing back, and you can get rocking and rolling right away. I'll show you my point right here. Say I swing out, boom, one, two. Almost got one and a half seconds just kind of hanging out there. And don't get me started with the overhead swing. It just kind of whoo, hangs out, comes back up. I prefer to get in a lot of repetitions and very explosive repetitions. I like to keep control of that kettlebell. When you go any higher than here, you start to lose control of the kettlebell with the shoulders. And then as it comes down, you'll have a lot weaker stance, grip, control that, that kettlebell as you go into that backswing again. Real quick, I'll show you from the front how I get set up. Kettlebell, center between my feet. I'm about a foot and a half behind it, feet shoulder width, toes straight ahead, heels down. I'm gonna spread the floor with my feet, lower my hips, reach out, grab the center of the handle, wrap the thumb and fingers around. I'm gonna bend the handle backwards, drop my biceps forward, pull my upper arms tight to my sides. Taking my belly breath, swing behind my hips, then explode forward and look for about belly height. Every time I come up, I'm gonna explosively squeeze those glutes, extend my hips. When I'm done, I'm gonna lower that bell under control. Last thing I'll talk about that I just thought of as I was doing this, not bending your back, okay? Um, and I'll go venture to say that this is the most common mistake that I see with kettlebell swings beyond picking it up with your hands, which I thought was probably the most common. But it's actually, instead of just extending the hips, people will go further and extend the lower back to try to make that work. What typically happens with those people, is it's not their fault necessarily that, that they got the motor control, they're squeezing their glutes, but their hips won't fully extend. Instead of their hips extending, their hips actually stop right here as an exaggerated point. And in order to bring that kettlebell up, they have to come back because those hips won't go any further. So as you're swinging, look out for this. I can almost guarantee you that lower back is gonna start hurting and I'm very sure you don't want that to happen. Make sure you can feel your butt, squeeze your glutes, okay? And if you don't know if you're doing it or not, have somebody watch you or videotape yourself doing it and post a link to it in the comments below, I'll be able to let you know, okay? That's all I got for the kettlebell swing. This has been your instructional video on the kettlebell swing with John Chacon, Stronger Every Day. Peace.